Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. Today we have a manga review of chapter 911, A Great Adventure in the Land of Samurai. And that title is all you need to know that the Wano arc has officially begun. Oda has a lot of nice little naming conventions when it comes to chapter titles, but my favourite are the adventure titles, which signify the start of what is surely a fantastic arc. So for example, the title Adventure in the Country of Love, Passion and Toys appeared as we thrust ourselves into Dressrosa, and the one for Zoe was Adventure in the Country on the Back of an Elephant. Although the one that kicked off Whole Cake Island was a bit sad. Adventure in the Mysterious Forest, Ooh, which was a reference to the seducing woods. I mean, it could have been so much cooler, like adventure on the island of candy and other candy related things, I don't know. But I do want to draw attention to one little thing in the title, and this may turn out to be completely nothing and just a translation that doesn't match up with the official English, but I'm intrigued by the fact that this title is a great adventure rather than just a simple old adventure. If this is an intentional move by Oda, then that's telegraphing that Wano is going to be something amazing and unique, even for One Piece. But that could be completely wrong. I'd need to compare the Japanese titles to find out, and I can't find a roar of 9-11 at the moment, so meh. All in all, this was a standard adventure chapter though. Not a lot of great importance really happened, so the same people that complained last week will be complaining this week. But once again, I found this chapter to be quite charming. Otama is a curious case of a child character who doesn't immediately annoy the hell out of me. Now, I don't think that One Piece has very strong child characters. <coughs> Momonosuke. <coughs> But Tama really does make a cool initial impact by using whatever the hell her ability is to tame the super cool looking baboon. I mean, she basically pulled a part of her cheek off to make it a dango, which is a Japanese dumpling, delicious. Though well, exactly how it allows her to tame this fearsome baboon is unknown, but I'm sure all will be explained relatively soon. All I know right now is she looks pretty damn adorable while doing it. Given that this is one piece we're talking about, it's probably a devil fruit power, but I wouldn't immediately rule out the potential of it being some sort of weird Wano-esque ability, especially because Tama is trained to become a kunoichi, which thanks to Naruto, everybody in the Western world knows is a female ninja. I bring this up because Raizo is a ninja and he can do a whole ton of cool things without being a devil fruit eater. Speaking of ninjas though, Tama's master has a very classic Tengu face. Tengu literally meaning heavenly dog, but they're a much more broad part of Japanese religion and folklore. Generally, they are considered as supernatural beings that are mischievous or even pure evil. Also quite interestingly, there are historical Tengu that take on bird forms and even some fusion Tengu that have the penis-like nose as well as the wings, which we have here. But now that we've mentioned the W word, speculation needs to happen on whether or not these wings are a costume piece or if they are real. Initially, to me, they look an awful lot like Monet and Lafitte's wings. And if they are actual wings, then this is a nice piece of evidence to add to the theory that there is a secret harpy race in the One Piece world. I'm not going to go into massive detail about it now because it's a, it's a disgustingly deep rabbit hole, but there are some very convincing arguments out there stating that Monet was, and yes, I mean was because she's dead, was a member of this harpy race and just as mermaids can split their tails when they reach the age of 30, harpies grow their wings and such at a similar age, which explains why Monet's sister Sugar was not shown as one, given that her aging was frozen. Look into it if you're interested, but yeah, I'm hoping that this Tengu has some real wings going on. Also, I love the trend of mistaking any long-nosed person for Usopp. It's such a simple and predictable joke, yet somehow so effective, for me anyway. But getting back to Tama, there's some pretty huge information dropped here, and that is that she has been waiting for none other than Ace. Ooh, awkward. Now, we did previously know that Ace had been to Wano, but Tama would have had to have been pretty damn young when that occurred. Tama is eight years old now, so prior to the time skip she would have been six, but it may have been even younger than that, because it would have been before Ace met Oz Jr., because by that point he already knew how to make the Wano style hats. But like I said before, it's a bit awkward because of, you know, the whole death thing. So whatever Tama is waiting for, I'd bet that Luffy is going to become the embodiment of it. As a side note, this just goes to show exactly how isolated Wano is. The news of Ace's death wasn't exactly kept quiet. I mean, it spread throughout the world like a plague. So yeah, that was another nice little detail conveying just how much of a separate existence it is to live on Wano, even if it is under the control of a global superpower. The other awesome thing that came out of this chapter is that the mystery of what happened to Hawkins has been somewhat solved. He was introduced officially as a member of the Beast Pirates, so he may have been with them all through the Alliance talk, but judging by his facial reaction to the chapter where Kaido was introduced, I think it's more likely that he was forced to join the Beast Pirates after witnessing Kaido's strength. And the same can be said of Scratch Manapu, because we saw his likeness in a Den Den Moshi way back when. Which means that Kid was either used as an example, or he was the only one of the three worst generation captains to take a crack at Kaido. And that very thought earns him an awful lot of respect from me, because I feel like only one other worst generation captain would do such a thing, 
and his name is Monkey D. Luffy, and that's why we love him. With that said, I'm thrilled to see Hawkins in particular, because his ability has always struck me as incredibly intriguing, and I cannot wait to learn more about him. I'm more or less assuming that he won't be an antagonist and will end up forming a temporary alliance with Luffy, as he is making a point of denying information from Kaido, although I do hope that with so many worst generation members present, that at least one of them is an enemy to begin with anyway. It would be really cool to see a proper conflict between these figures at some point, and it might get just a little bit boring and predictable if they just join up one by one. But while Hawkins and Ace were very much the major takeaway points from this chapter, I had a lot of fun this week. Wano continues to be a particularly breathtaking location, unlike anything we've really seen before. And you know what, if we're going to be here for two years or so, then, well, that's exactly what we need. I'm also very much continuing to enjoy the animals, with the baboon definitely being my favourite at the moment. There's just something about a baboon with a katana that achieves a level of awesome I never thought possible. Although I do also really like the Koma Inu, and being a dog person I want him for myself. There was also one other minor point of interest in this chapter though, and that happens to be the panel where Kaido's lackey is yelling at the baboon for being intimidated by Luffy. On his shoulder just so happens to be the logo for Weekly Shonen Jump, as well as a straw hat pirate Jolly Roger, which I believe is a nod to the 50th anniversary of Jump, and that is really cool. Although it's kind of crazy to think that One Piece has been running for over 20 years of that time. Wow. But that pretty much does it for chapter 911. If you enjoyed this video, then feel free to like, favorite, or subscribe. And if you are in any way keen on supporting independent creators and also feel free to check out my patreon discord server or twitter links to which are in the handy description below finally please do comment with your thoughts on the chapter this has been the grand line review and i'll see you next time